Champions League is back tonight and summer has decided to arrive on the 17th of September now that the kids are back in school and all my mates are working on a Tuesday afternoon and I can't even go to the pub anyway because I'm not drinking for a few weeks. So well done, summer 2024. You played a blinder there. New format for the Champions League. I quite like it. A lot of the traditionalists maybe wanted to stick to the groups of four and the Tuesday, Wednesday games. Now we have a big group of 36 teams and six games on a Tuesday, six on a Wednesday, six on a Thursday. 18 games in total, 36 teams. Now, I quite like this from a betting perspective. I could care less from an entertainment perspective. I think it's a good change in terms of opportunity. And I will... Explain the reasoning for that in a little bit, but I'm going to start off with a caveat and a warning, okay? So the, ter the things I'm going to be looking at in the Champions League, well, the things I'm not going to be looking at are match odds and Asian handicaps and markets like that, because this is a competition that attracts the smartest of largest syndicates, the most amount of money. If you, if you think your model can beat... These are lines that are shaped by very, very efficient, liquid, large syndicates. Then, well, good luck to you. I know my limits and it's not an area that I believe I can think beat. I mean, you can maybe chase steamers a little bit if you want to jump on the back of that. I've heard it's maybe getting a little bit more popular, that strategy. And in all honesty, it's, it's not the best one. It's not the highest ROI. If there's more people doing it, you just, um, especially in the Champions League, are you beating the closing line more often than not? Um, you do you. If that's what you want to do, it's not what I'm going to be doing. Instead, I'm going to be looking elsewhere at more secondary um, markets um, for goals, such as time-dependent ones. So, you know, things to happen in the first 15 minutes. It's a little bit easier to find some value in that. Things to happen in both halves. Team to score in both halves, team to win both halves, things like that. Um, and corners and cards are always good. And then player, uh, player stats, assists, tackles, shots, shots on target, fouls, committed, not fouls, one for me yet. Haven't quite got around that. Score and assist and player goals, player XG. So those are what I'm going to be looking at. There's a lot more opportunity, a lot more value um, in those markets to make some money than there is in the more efficient liquid markets. Okay, so let's now go back to that caveat. Um, just now, Ollie Watkins, I don't know, I, I, he may have been boosted somewhere, but his exchange price it seems to be very large compared to what it should be. Ollie Watkins would be expected to get a 1.25 shots on target in this game, which would be 1.40 odds of him getting one shot on target or more, 2.81 for two or more, 7.6 for three or more. Now, you can back him right now on the exchanges at 1.72. So you're like, oh, wow, that's a big value bet, isn't it? 1.72 to back, 1.4 fair odds. Be very, very careful. Watkins may not start. In fact, is likely not to start tonight, but actually may come on. And um, There's a bit of jiggery-pokery going on with the Aston Villa players away to um, Duncan's favourite, Young Boys, playing at the Wankdorf Stadium. And um, the G Aston Villa are likely tonight to go with Duran and Rogers up front ahead of McGinn, Barkley, Tielemans and Ramsey. Ollie Watkins has travelled with the squad. He might start, but there's a very good chance he comes on at like half-time or 70 minutes or 80 minutes. Now, if he comes on at 80 minutes, his 1.25 expectancy for shots on target is now like 0 0.18, 0 0.2, something like that. The odds of him getting a shot of target are no longer 1.4, um, but instead I don't, closer to, you know, double figures. Um, so just be very, very, very careful with Ollie Watkins. Personally, I'm not touching the guy. I'm not touching young boys, and I'm not touching Ollie Watkins at least until Team News. Now, at Team News, now, there is opportunity at Team News, especially with a guy like this that may very well be benched but may come on later in the game. Your opportunity, really, is a sort of really big value lay. Now, there's perhaps a moral compass to look at there. 
I'm not going to put my judgment on either side of the coin, but just be aware, you're probably matching a price that the, you, you know, you're, you're laying a price that the backer didn't intend to do given the fact that Ollie might be coming on later in the match, right? Whether you want to or not, whether that's trap betting or fair play, some would argue yes, some would argue no. And I'm not getting involved, I'm just making you aware that there's a, you know, a, a spectrum of morality to walk through if you're doing that. Certainly in the past I have inadvertently laid some players who have come on late in the game. You love to see it, just as you lo love laying a player and seeing him come off a half-time hobbling off injured. There, I said it, come at me. Um, so, and similarly, by the way, if he does start and you can get that 1.7, there's the opportunity to back at that price. And perhaps then you're taking advantage of people that would have lowered the price and it was a case of fastest fingers first. It's up to you. So, um, in this game, uh, also, the fact that Duran and um, Rogers are starting up from there is some value, in my honest opinion, currently in the exchanges and some bookmakers for backing the Villa players. Uh, if you can get two to one on Duran, if you can get three to one on Morgan Rogers, if you can get eleven to two on John McGinn, all of those look really, really decent ahead of Team News. I expect those prices will come crashing in. There quite could be quite a lot of jiggery pokery going on in the Villa match, depending on whether um Ollie Watkins starts or not. We will see, but Half past four, four forty-five is going to be an interesting time. I actually don't know, and I should, when team news is in the Champions League because I know they changed it in the Premiership to seventy-five minutes beforehand. Have they done that in the Champions League? Let me know, or maybe I'll find out today because it's the first um, Champions League match of the season. Now, this new format: thirty-six teams. The top eight go through to the last sixteen automatically. Nine to twenty-four go to a playoff. So this should eliminate a lot of the dead rubbers that we might have had in previous seasons, groups of four, where perhaps a team has won four or even lost four in a row. They've got nothing to play for in games five and six. Um, now, you, if you like this League of 36, you segment it into four groups of nine, and each team will play two teams from each segment. So you don't play all, you know, every team in the table. That would be nonsense. You just play your eight games um, and this is modelled on the Romanian League, where apparently it works quite well. Um, and hopefully this means that there's more to play for, especially for those teams that are trying to sneak into 24th, that you would imagine, you know, are the Young Boys, are the Red Bull Salzburgs and the um, Carvenas Vedvedas and, you know, games like that. So uh, it should make it more competitive. But from a betting perspective, we now have six windows. And that's what we're focused on. I mean, the Premiership... You don't have six windows. Well, you may, you might have six windows, but a lot of those are single matches. And when all the attention is on a single match, it tends to be more efficient. You know, you get a single Monday night game in the Premiership. It's difficult to find an edge on that. Whereas when there's multiple matches, there's a little bit wider spread of attention, and that can lead to opportunity. And now we've got six windows. 5.45 kickoffs, two games each night, 8 p.m., four games. Repeat that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I like it. This is six windows of opportunity. So before Team News, I am looking at secondary goals, corners and cards as long as it's for, as long as it's for the match. Okay? So, you know, home corners, away corners, home goals, away goals, home cards, away go cards. That kind of thing during the morning, lunchtime, early afternoon. I'll be looking at those markets leading up to... The team news when I'm now switching certainly over to player statistics and player XG. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm not looking beforehand. In fact, tomorrow I'm off to Manchester to see Moby. Um, and as a result, I'm not going to be looking at you know any team news. I'm going to be out having dinner and then at the, uh, at the concert. So I'm not going to get the opportunity for Celtic, Slovan, Bratislava for Man City, Inter. So I will look at some of those player markets beforehand. But I better be pretty confident that those players are starting. Otherwise, I'm not betting either a back or a lay on them. Um, and even then, I can put in some expected lineups into my model. And even if they do start, their expectancies really do depend on who else starts with them. If Haaland's up front by himself, he's getting a lot more goals than if he's sharing it with two other strikers. 
Um, so it's not just the player starts, but what else happens in the game can seriously affect if things can turn an early lunchtime positive EV bet for a player that I predict to start into a negative EV bet, even though he does start, which is why I don't really like looking at player bets very early, very often, unless I, I'm off to see some American trans house DJ in the centre of Manchester. And then on Thursday, we've got an interesting afternoon on Thursday, we've got Carvenas Vedveda at Benfica and Feyenoord Leverkusen at 5.40 ahead of Arsenal playing in the evening and probably the match of the whole of the first round, in my opinion, at Let's Go Madrid RB Leipzig. Those early matches, though, uh, they coincide with a driver awareness training course. I got caught breaking the law. I am a criminal, officially an actual criminal. I did 36 and a 30, and I hold my hands up. I'm guilty as charged. Bang me up to rights, Your Honour. And so I'm doing one of these online driver training courses, and I've talked to a buddy that's done them. Apparently, you've got to, like, focus straight at the camera and not be distracted. And if you ever sort of even look to the right or the left and don't engage or you don't know what's going on, you get called up about it and you can actually fail the thing if you're not concentrating. So I definitely, in my multiple screen setup, will not have the Carvenas, Vedveda, Benfica and Feyenoord, Leverkusen markets up during my driver training course, which happens to be 2.30 to 5.30 on Thursday afternoon. I will purely be focused on repenting for my sins because I'll tell you what they love it these driver training awareness course instructors they absolutely love it and good on them because they're just making the country safer right good luck in the Champions League whatever it is that you're betting on good luck to me in the driver awareness training course on Thursday afternoon um six windows of opportunity plenty of us to be getting at it yeah postscript let's get at it what an absolutely terrible way of wrapping that up what an arse i hate that but i'm not going to re-record the whole thing for an awful last three words it's about 25 degrees outside and in this office it's like a convection oven it's about eight degrees warmer than it is outside i'm blaming the heat wave that we're experiencing good grief i'm off for a dip in the paddling pool <laughs>